Hello, welcome to a video with me, Virle. And um, this time I want to talk about relationships and the outer planets. Also, not only the outer planets, but also Jupiter and Saturn in relation to Venus. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I just wanted to wait up until I had a bit more, let's say, practical um, uh, experience with, uh, with clients to see if what I already thought um, that I had experienced and that I had learned around relationships, that this was the case with clients as well. So I waited a bit before uh, to share this because, of course, when I think about relationships, it, it's a very subjective uh, thing, isn't it? Because we, are, we relate to, to other people, but this is a very subjective thing. Even in astrology, as an astrologer, you always, you always have your own standards and norms and values. That's why it's not easy. To, um, and you must have, well, that's what I think, you must have a really open uh, point of view in able to uh, help other people with their relationships. So a lot of people ask me to do a video about relationships because if I have two consultations, one of them is mostly about relationships. So uh, um, I think it's quite interesting to share with you. It's just... What, what I want to share is not only my experience with relationships, not that it is wow, but um, I mean a lot of experience, but also my knowledge about astrology and also the, the uh, gift and the blessing that I have with working with clients because you learn, you, you become a better astrologer by doing astrology, it's simple um, in my point of view. Because I'm a very practical uh, person, if a theory doesn't work, I just, I, I don't want to uh, um, work with that anymore. So it's very simple. What I'm going to say here, you will find some things in books and on the internet are astrologers who claim that the things are the same, but you will definitely also find my personal opinion around and not only personal opinion, but based on the experience with clients. So what I'm going to talk about here is Venus, and I'm going to talk about relationships. So if people want to know something about, let's say, the upcoming year when it comes to relationships, you look at the transits of, of course, the whole horoscope. So also of the moon and also of the sun, etc., etc. But specifically for relationships, it's sometimes not Venus, uh, it's sometimes the moon or sometimes something is happening with Mars actually in the horoscope of a male. It could be uh, like uh, Pluto or Mars for instance and telling a lot more than just the Venus. But this is a general, we have to start somewhere. So in general I want to focus on Venus because it's not only about relationships, it's also what we value at, the, at a particular moment with the transits. So we have a Venus in a horoscope, which is a natal Venus that will last forever as we are here. But there are transits going on that touch that Venus. And therefore, we have this uh, rather like Plutonian energy or Neptunian energy, Uranus energy going on on the Venus. So that's why I want to talk about it. So let's get started. We know that Venus is about what we want, what we like, how we attract the nice things in life and um, what we want in life, how we enjoy our lives, what we think is nice, what we value, what we think is important, what is not important. So let's say a, v uh, a Venus in, um, in Scorpio, for instance. I have my Venus in Scorpio and a Venus in Scorpio needs depth in relationships needs loyalty, commitment, deep, deep, intense uh, relationships. That's the Venus in Scorpio. So that's the a coat that the Venus is wearing. But the aspects in a natal chart um, are also very, very important. So let's say someone with a Venus in Scorpio is all about depth. But when Jupiter is connected to that Venus, it, it makes it way more uh, open, may way more buoyant, way more not so deep, but broader. Um, of course, the depth will stay, but it will have the broadness, for instance, that is 
uh, that is uh, typical for Jupiter. The same if you have a Jupiter transit to your Venus, even though you, you, you have, for instance, a Venus in Scorpio, like I have, but if you have a transit with a, a nice Jupiter transiting, conjuncting your Venus or trining your Venus, so the more positive transit of Jupiter will, you will expand, you will find so much more meaning in love and, um, and you, will, uh, uh, you will have a more optimistic view upon life. So this is how, how this works out. So let's have a look at all the outer planets and also the Jupiter and Saturn. So I'm going to look Venus versus Jupiter, Venus versus Saturn, we and so on. So I already mentioned a bit about Jupiter. So you can have in your natal chart, for instance, a connection between Jupiter and Venus. And even though if you are a very serious person um, with, let's say, a strong Saturn or something like that, the Jupiter will absolutely bring some buoyancy in your chart and bring some lightness so, um, and an art for enjoying life. And I say an art, why? It's easy to enjoy life when you have no problems. But when you have problems and still being able to enjoy the good things about life, like a beautiful sunset or, I don't know, a nice drink or anything, these people can do that, notwithstanding the fact that they have problems. So a lot of people with the Jupiter and Venus connection a lot of other people think that they're having no problems at all because of this very open, um, demonstrative way of showing the joy of life. So uh, it is simply because these people know that not, life is not always wonderful, but um, there is meaning to it. There is meaning to love. So what about transits? Jupiter transit is not a slow transit, so it's a rather fast transit. So yes, if you're looking for love and let's say you are single and as an astrologer you see that Jupiter is crossing the Venus, it's a little testimony that someone will have luck and fall in love and feel that Jupiterian um, uh, energy when they are uh, falling in love. So when a relationship starts, with the Jupiter-Venus connection and the relationship, if it lasts a year or five years or 20 years, it will always have that energy of Jupiter and Venus. In other words, it, it's, it's a good time to start a relationship because it always has that optimism in the relationship. So, um, and even if you have a relationship and Jupiter comes along, it's always an opening up and feeling good about, maybe if you are a woman, it can just mean that you're feeling very good about yourself. And, um, but definitely in a child of a man, it can mean that a woman comes along that will be, have had, have this, these Jupiterian qualities. So this, this quality of being wise and, and being open and being positive towards life. But as I said, it's not always a testimony. There has to be more things to see if um, a, a relationship can start and has the testimony of you will meet someone. What about Saturn? Saturn is a bit the opposite, you could say, of Jupiter. But does it mean about it, it's a bad thing? No. Remember that astrology is all about mirrors. It's a mirror about what is happening to us. It's, if you're having a Saturn transit to your Venus um, or having that in your natal chart, and by the way, I made a video about Venus and Saturn if you are interested in that, if you have that in your natal chart, people always think this is not good because Saturn is a bit of um, cutting off, feeling isolated. It's not the best transit uh, they think to have if they are in a relationship or even if they are out of a relationship. Now, my experience is this is not true. What is, what is true is the situation of the person. It depends all on the situation. And the energy, yes, the energy of Saturn is restrictive, responsibility. Um, so, in other words, if you're having a transit of Saturn, and let's say you are single, and you meet someone at that particular point, and you start a relationship, that relationship will have uh, you know, as long as it, it takes, you know, if it's a year or 20 years or 30 years, it will have the ingredients of Saturn. In other words, it will be a very responsible relationship. It won't be the relationship like just 
I mentioned with Jupiter, like feeling open and feeling optimistic. No, it's about seriousness. And I know that a lot of people think, hmm, that's boring, but it isn't. Because it means that when people have that in their transit, it means it's exactly what they need. It's exactly what's good for them. So maybe you are, um, let's say, a bit of a playboy, you're 60, 60 years old, you've always been uh, playing around, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's Saturn on your Venus, and there is a Saturn lady crossing your uh, path, and all of, a all of a sudden you realize the importance of a serious relationship. And so it's not necessarily a bad thing. You, you, you then uh, fall in love, you know, the, the, the um, energies of falling in love all have to do with the connections of these planets like Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. So the, the ingredient, the flavor, is always the, the transit. So that's why sometimes with one person we can feel this, uh, and, and five years after we feel something else with another person. Why is that? Because this is reflected in the charts that we experience um, different energies, sometimes with the same person and sometimes with different people. It's just the way it is. And if you meet someone in, during a Saturn period, it can be a really serious relationship. It's not going to be, wow, exciting and buoyant and oh, full of optimism and idealism. No, it's going to be about, hey, a responsibility. And it means that that person needs that at that particular time. But of course, when you're having not a good relationship and Saturn comes along 80%, that the relationship will end. So that's true as well. So the astrologer always needs the situation um, to, to give the good prediction. Um, I mean, astrology is not so much for prediction, it's more of an understanding, I think. That's my personal opinion again, uh, an understanding of why things happen the way they happen. So that's for Saturn. So don't think when you're having a Saturn, I see people marrying with Saturn on their Venus. So, um, but I've seen divorces as well. So it depends on the context, the situation that the person is in. If the person is in a good relationship and Saturn comes along, it's no use as an astrologer to say, nah, there's a bit of Saturn there. No, if the situation is, yes, I'm having a rather good relationship, then it means a commitment. It could mean a better commitment. When it's a bad relationship, when there is really, really trouble, it can be indeed testing time. But even then, you cannot know by this aspect on its own if it's going to break up, uh, it being a breakup. There has to be plenty of more things before I even say that. I, actually, I, I rarely do so because uh, it's, up, it's up to the person. It's up to the soul. So, but this is Saturn. So if you're having Saturn transits, it's going to be Saturn flavor. It's going to be serious, maybe a bit heavy. So it also depends on your natal chart, how you respond to that. If you are already, let's say you have a moon conjunct Saturn, then you are a really Saturn person. And then having Saturn on the Venus is, yeah, it's familiar. I, I, I feel very good in my relationship. Um, and another person having like um, Uranus on their Venus, and then they're having a Saturn on that Venus, it's way more difficult to accept that energy of Saturn. So everyone is unique and um, also the situation is unique. So it all depends on where is this person in a particular time. So what about Uranus? Uranus is one of my fa favorites because I know it's not really... Um, Uranus is seen, if you read the books, uh, as a, a marriage wrecker. Or how do you say that? It, it breaks relationships. It's about cutting off. And it's true, the energy of Uranus is about cutting off, but only, only when you have stocked all the, um, you could say, uh, wanting to free yourself up, but not being able to do so. If you have that for years and years and years, and suddenly Uranus comes along on your Venus, for instance, uh, in a square, or an opposition, or a conjunction, then yes, it can mean a breakup but not necessarily. Again, the context is very important. The energy of Uranus is the following. It wants to free you up. It wants to be also true. It's about truth as well. And it's about freeing yourself up, 
Um, Uranus is the energy where people have strong Uranus in their chart and I can talk out of experience when you feel trapped um, uh, and trapped I mean like a cat in, in, in a little little corner then you just break the ties because you haven't dealt with it before when you should have so I see a lot with people who've got Uranus transit it's because even when they're not a Uranus kind of person it's because they have um, they haven't been dealing with the things that they should have been dealing. They have been too much restrictive energy in their life. It could be relationship, but it can also be something else like work or anything. But now we're talking about relationships. So, in other words, uh, if you had a long relationship, Uranus also means uh, doing the opposite, doing the unusual. So let's say you have been, um, again, a playboy for your whole life, or a playgirl, and you're like, you know, 40 years old, and you always jumped from the one relationship to another, and all of a sudden you have a Uranus, so this is the context of the person who comes to, you, to an astrologer and says, you know, what's gonna happen with my love life? The thing of the context of always having had different relationships, when Uranus comes along, it's gonna be different for this person. So. This context means that this person with the Uranus coming along will probably fall in love with someone that is really fascinating them and they really uh, are probably are going to, um, to live and experience the opposite. In other words, they were going to have a serious relationship. So you see how tricky this, this, this is when you, you only know a little about astrology and think, oh, Uranus on my Venus, I'm going to have a breakup. No, not necessarily. Um, uh, another thing, if you, if you have been single for, a lot, for quite a while, let's say a year, two years, you've been single out of fear, for instance, um, or out of having bad relationships or whatever, and all of a sudden Uranus comes along. It doesn't, and you want a serious relationship, it means that there is good opportunity that you will have that. Because Uranus breaks up the old pattern, and the old pattern was fear. So it breaks up the fear of relationship that brings you into a new one and makes you more free and open towards a new relationship. And even the question, will it last long or not, is, is not even the, the good question. The best question is, will I have a relationship? And in 80% of the cases with Uranus there, it will be yes. Because the context was of, I have no relationship because of the fear, for instance. And then someone comes along, the Uranus brings out the person, because Uranus on a Venus definitely means that you are going to meet people that are really, really fascinating to you. And they're really going to be, uh, you know, they always talk about the excitement with Uranus. Well, it, it's like, Oh, this is something fresh, this is something new. So this is the context that is really important. Um, in my own experience, I met my boyfriend 18 years ago with Uranus squaring up to my Venus. So I don't think 18 years is, is a short, short period. It's because a lot in books they say Uranus is not long term. And I've seen it in experiences with clients as well, that when they come from the situation of fear, and being single for quite a long and quite a while, and then Uranus comes along. It's like boom, they are oh, they they um are more daring, more rebellious towards the energy. I, I will I will try again, and it's 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 that that is the most important thing. It's not will it last forever or not. It's not the question. And of course, if you have the last scenario that can be possible, if you have like twenty years of good relationship or fairly good, you know, with its ups and downs like everybody else, but a fairly steady, steady relationship, you can be sure if your, your Uranus comes along, it's going to be unstable. And it doesn't mean to say it's going to wreck the marriage, but there is a good chance, if you don't do anything, that there will be a separation. So it, it simply reflects the restlessness within you, whether that person wants to go away or whether you want to go away, or both. It always demands a new look at your Venus, a new look at what you value in life. Why are you not being content? Because Uranus makes people restless because they are not content. So yes, if you don't change your situation, um, there will be upheavals. That is, so, so you could say 
or to summarize that Uranus comes in when you've been a bit too lazy on um, and not dealing with certain things that you should have dealt with earlier and mostly it has to do with restrictions or feeling restricted in a relationship um, th that happens quite a lot when people are in a relationship and Uranus uh, comes along so there's something going on there with not feeling uh, free enough or um, or uh, the other person not feeling free enough or both so that's for Uranus Uranus is, is definitely um, depending on the context it does just the opposite that's my my experience so um, and uh, then we have Pluto Pluto is also uh, not a, a totally different energy that is not easy to deal with um, especially if you have in your natal chart a lot of air um, and not a lot of uh, let's say you don't have a, a strong Pluto in your chart and what is a strong Pluto? Well Pluto for instance, for instance on your IC or conjunct your moon or your sun um, so you're not familiar with those energies and then it is quite hard to deal with so it all depends on the uniqueness of the person and of what the natal chart is of the person, how this person will deal with this particular energy. So Pluto is about intensity, it's about depth, it's about uh, obsession, it's about um, possessiveness, it's about... Um, because I, I'm talking here about the more negative energies because when... when um, there is a uh, trouble with relationships it's not because of trines or sextiles so mostly it's because of squares and oppositions and sometimes conjunctions especially also with pluto so again look at the context of the person and and if you're doing this for yourself look at and and having and you're seeing a pluto transit coming along look at your context again when you are single with having Pluto coming along, you may definitely um, be sure of the fact that your love life will intensify or even the longings will intensify, the, the feelings will intensify and that's what you value, you, you can be obsessed by a person, you can really be um, uh, controlling um, or if you are for instance in a relationship, the relationship can become a bit uh, uh, or compelling or they're demanding a lot from you or the person that you are with is going through a huge transformation maybe at work maybe with health um, depends on the whole child of course and uh, if you are in a relationship that is not really fulfilling then the chances are really big that um, you could meet someone else and you're totally uh, obsessed with this other person um, or you are going to end a relationship so definitely with the Pluto it's also very it's a bit dramatic but I think in my opinion Pluto transits Uranus transits Saturn transits it's all for the good after all and um, in other words when I see back the clients who had those transits on their Venus and um, let's say they come back after a year or two years they always said um, maybe Vila at, at that particular time it was hard and tough and uh, it was not, uh, it, was, it, it was painful but it was after all for the good. I'm in a better place now and um, it had to be like that. The, the former relationship, um, you know, it, it wasn't good anymore or it, it, um, and it's for the good that I am where I am now. But this is not, I, I, I never saw this uh, with uh, Neptune. So with Neptune, it's a different story because I've seen a lot with people who are having Neptune transits, uh, like oppositions and squares, that is, that I, I def I, I've almost always seen regrets. So I know that Neptune has the, uh, when you read that in the books, Neptune is often, um, it's, it's, it's mostly romantic. It's very romantic. It's, it's um very broad and very compassionate and the feelings are um, uh, hugely um, uh, idealized um, so when you're having this in a very positive transit this can be amazing you can meet your soulmate but when it's as I said in a square 
are in an opposition with Neptune, it's de definitely not looking at what you should look at. And therefore, deception, therefore, disillusion, therefore, um, not uh, um, realizing that you uh, were not seeing what you were supposed to see. So I see that a lot when um, clients come back after Neptune transit, they say, I should have listened to you. I am, um, and not that I've said wow things, but I, I, what I mostly say with people having Neptune transit, I say, just, just don't do anything. Just wait until the transit is over because you don't have all the information. You're completely in the mist and people don't like that. Um, when you say that, when they're, you know, you, you uh, take away their dream actually, but it's for putting the feedback on the ground a little bit more. And, um, and mostly these people say, yes, I've, uh, you know, uh, I had some, I had a lot of pain and I caused other people pain as well. So the thing is with Neptune that this mist that it creates with oppositions and squares is also wrecking. So um, I know that a lot of people think Pluto is, 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 is uh, very awful and uh, Saturn and Uranus is awful, but Neptune can be as wrecking as well. Actually, I've seen a lot of stories of people having Neptune um, opposite Venus, for instance, and also other things going on, like maybe a, a Neptune conjunct um, uh, Mars, for instance. So the, the love plan is being involved there and really having uh, uh, wrecking uh, stories uh, full of pain and full of, um, uh, you know, th and that's probably the, because as a, as, a, as a person, you can ask yourself, why? Why do people have to go through these painful situations? Now, when in the case with Neptune, I think it's about compassion and it's about forgiveness, um, forgiving oneself and forgiving others. That's, that's that definitely the case with Neptune and making people way more humble as well uh, and more sensitive. So, and again, it depends on the personality, how they will deal with it. If, if, you, if you deal with a person who's very rational and who's got like, let's say, a lot of planets in Earth signs or, or in air signs or, or a very rational person, they can really have trouble with Neptune. And, um, and in other cases, people who have some planets in water sign, they, they are, are more, they know that sometimes um, what, what they're looking at and idealizing is not always reality, but they, they can cope with that. They don't, um, they know, oh, oh, this is just happening. It, it, it'll pass away and it's not so bad. So it all depends on your natal child as well, how you react upon these energies. So every uh, outer planet, including then Jupiter as well and Saturn, is um, flavoring the Venus, you could say. And therefore, we often uh, have different experiences in our love life. And, um, and if you wanna know how your love life will look like, you, you best look at a very long period of time to see a bit of flavors. And, and then you can, uh, um, you can make a good picture out of it. And, um, of course, doing a Venus return, I would recommend as well, because Venus return reveals a lot, especially when people are interested in knowing, you know, when they are in a critical time of their relationship, a Venus return always shows uh, some uh, testimonies of what is happening and what is not happening, about the truth, actually, because that's what we want to see in astrology. We, we want to see what's going on there. So, um, Nothing is good and nothing is bad with, with those energies. So I wanted to, um, to explain a bit about the outer planets and about Jupiter and Saturn versus your Venus. But I also wanted to warn that if you are doing a, if you are into astrology and you're interested in it and you're studying it, don't take it all out of its context. Okay, so I think I made my point there. Look at your own context. And then you can make the best, um, and then you know where you need to go and where you need to head at. Then uh, if, if, if you do that, astrology is such um, a good tool to uh, self-knowledge and to knowledge where you should go. You know, uh, if you, if you want to look at your higher purpose, if you want to look at the whole divine, 
um, world that we're living in actually. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just, uh, just um, do the questions below. I'm going to answer them as much as I can. And um, thank you for listening and have a good, have a good little life. Bye-bye.